Hey, Stargazers, welcome back. My name is Nick. I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium, and you're watching Skywatch Weekly. Well, I don't know about you, but I've got some Mars fever right now. The red planet is just gorgeous in the evening sky. I certainly hope you've had a chance to see it for yourself, either with or without a telescope. I've had the opportunity to go out several nights with the telescope, and other nights, when the conditions aren't quite as good, I've just gone out for a few minutes, looked just with my eyes, watching Mars peeking through the clouds from time to time. You can catch it for yourself quite easily in the evening sky. As the sky gets dark, Mars is fairly low in the east. It's currently the brightest point of light in the evening sky. It's visible even through thin clouds or strong light pollution, and it'll be higher and higher in the sky throughout the first half of the night. Through the telescope, I was happy to get some good images using a DSLR camera. Capturing and processing these images is a fairly complicated process I won't get into here, but this gives a good impression of the view you can expect to see through a good telescope during brief moments of very clear seeing. Although your view will most likely be upside down or flipped left to right, that depends on the optics of your telescope. Surface features are hard to make out on Mars, but you can clearly see here some brighter and darker areas. And if we add in a simulated view of Mars, you can see we're definitely picking up recognizable features. Here's a slightly clearer view from Sunday night with more detail visible. You can clearly see the south polar cap made up of frozen carbon dioxide. Summer began in the southern hemisphere of Mars back in early September. So the pole cap has shrunk considerably as that CO2 turns back into gas but this allows the full extent of the cap to be seen from Earth right now. The north polar cap is tilted out of sight, but there's a noticeable grouping of clouds over the north polar region that's known as the north polar hood. There's also some haze in the atmosphere on the sides of the planet. This is caused by dust and CO2 crystals scattering sunlight in the atmosphere. Well, last night, October 6th was the closest we'll see Mars for 2020, but it's still quite close and will reach opposition next Tuesday, October 13th. We've discussed opposition a couple times in these videos, especially in the July 8th episode about Jupiter. Opposition is the point when a planet is opposite the Sun in the sky. So on October 13th, Mars will be rising at sunset, and every day after that, it will be higher and higher above the horizon as the sun goes down. Opposition is generally the best time to view a planet through a telescope, although it won't be at its highest in the sky until the middle of the night. So how did we get to this point? And what will Mars be doing for the rest of the year? Well, for the first half of 2020, Mars was a very early morning view, rising after midnight and still quite small in the telescope. Right around the middle of June, it began rising before midnight and offering clearer views high in the south in the early morning hours. Now, it's well up in the sky as night sets in, getting highest in the sky in the middle of the night and is closest to Earth for the year right now. As we close out 2020, Mars will be up earlier and earlier, but Earth will have passed it in its orbit and it will be farther away and looking dimmer in the sky. For instance, it will be high in the south at 7 p.m. on New Year's Eve. What could be more convenient, right? Remember, though, it's getting farther away. In fact, it will be over twice the distance on New Year's Eve that it is right now. So despite the later hour, it's definitely worth staying up later until Mars is higher in the sky if you're hoping to view it through a telescope. My challenge to you, no matter what time you're looking in the evening, go outside and look at Mars. It won't be this close or this bright for another 15 years, so take advantage and check it out. For more on Mars, check out Adler's Sky Observer's Hangout coming up next Tuesday, October 13th. Michelle and Adriana from the Public Observing Team will cover it all for you. Take your questions and possibly grab some live telescope views of Mars during the show. And if you can't wait till then, check out last night's episode for even more about Mars. Well, Mars is currently stealing the show, but that doesn't mean there aren't other great things to look for in the night sky, especially as you're waiting for Mars to climb higher over the horizon. Q2 
Keep in mind, you've still got Saturn and Jupiter, smaller and dimmer than their beautiful July oppositions, but still bright and high up in the sky in the evening. These two will appear closer and closer in the sky over the next couple of months, leading up to a stunningly close pairing in late December. So every week or so, check in with them and see if you can spot that closing gap. This month, we're bidding farewell to a familiar springtime sight. The bright star Arcturus is low in the west after sunset. You might recall the trick of using the Big Dipper's handle to find it. Just follow the arc to Arcturus. Catch it while you can. By Halloween, it will be quite low in the sky in that twilight glow. So we have spring stars setting in the west. High above, we have our familiar summer triangle stars. These three stars, Deneb, Vega, and Altair, are easily seen through light polluted skies. They begin their night high overhead, and they're beginning their slow slide to the northwest horizon. They'll be around for the rest of the fall, though, so definitely check them out. And speaking of fall, the mythological soap opera we told in the video on September 23rd is getting higher in the sky along with Mars in the early evening. Characters like Cassiopeia, Pegasus, Andromeda, and Perseus grace the skies around Mars. And by the time Mars is at its highest in the south, well-known wintertime sites like Taurus the Bull and Orion the Hunter are well above the eastern horizon. So just like that, between sunset and late bedtime, you can see three bright planets and a whole host of seasonal constellations across the sky. Well, that's what we have for you this week. Thanks, as always, for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and follow Adler's social media accounts for awesome space content throughout the week. Happy Mars watching, and we'll see you next week.